Assalamualaikum doctors. Now let's talk about uh, another lecture that is chronic liver failure. Now let's what is the definition of liver failure, chronic liver failure. So chronic liver failure means that whenever hepatic encephalopathy occur after six months of initial diagnosis. So what is the definition of chronic liver failure? Whenever hepatic encephalopathy occur after after six months of initial diagnosis that is chronic liver failure now this chronic liver failure it is always are almost associated with the it is almost always associated with cirrhosis now students remember that in the 90 percent cases in stage liver disease it is associated with cirrhosis while in 10 percent cases in stage liver disease it is not associated with cirrhosis okay now in 90 percent cases the in stage liver disease it is associated with cirrhosis while in 10 percent cases in stage liver disease it is not associated with cirrhosis now actually what is cirrhosis so you can easily appreciate it, the difference differential pictures regarding cirrhotic liver in normal liver so in the cirrhotic liver when you are try to appreciate the cirrhotic liver there will be always some nodules will be present in the liver say if this is the liver so there will be always nodules is present in and as you know that in the, uh, in the liver there will be uh, hepatocytes is also present but in the condition of the cirrhosis there will be a lot of nodules will be present and they will be surrounded by a lot of fibrotic tissues as it is a chronic infection is mostly in 90 percent cases the instant liver disease it is associated with cirrhosis so there will be nodules present and that is surrounded with, with the fibrotic tissues now how you will define the cirrhosis condition so cirrhosis is the regenerating regenerating liver nodules that surrounded by band of fibrosis and so what is uh, cirrhosis actually it is a regenerating liver nodules that is surrounded by a band of fibrosis now in the cirrhotic picture of the liver there will be nodules and that is surrounded by repeated healing picture of the scarring and fibrosis and repeated healing of scarring and fibrosis there is uh, they occur one, uh, one after another so as it is more associated with the chronic infection so there will be repeatedly episodes of scarring and fibrosis okay now that's the cirrhosis now let's talk about the causes of uh, cirrhosis now what are the causes of cirrhosis the causes of cirrhosis is alcoholic liver diseases and non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases we will be explaining these in upcoming lectures but till now the major cause of the chronic liver failure is alcoholic liver diseases even they are associated in 70 percent cases while in 15 percent cases the non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases it is the major cause for the chronic liver failure and the hepatitis b virus and hepatitis c virus along with that the primary biliary cholangitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis we will be also discussing it in a detail now what are the causes of the chronic liver failure that is alcoholic liver disease non-alcoholic fatty liver disease hepatitis b virus hepatitis c virus and primary biliary cholangitis primary sclerosing cholangitis but don't forget the main causes that is hepatitis b virus and hepatitis c virus and alcoholic liver disease and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease at least you should have you should have learn and recall these four causes that is very important now let's talk about the morphology now as i told you if you see the liver grassly and microscopically of cirrhotic picture of the liver you will found that if this is a liver so there will be 
as there will be a lot of hepatocytes and there will be nodules present there will be nodules and if you see the nodules there will be the one end the one end of this nodule will be up and the the another end will be somehow it look like will be that, that is somehow it look like is depressed so uh, if you see the nodules the one end is a bit up and the other end is depressed so the upper portion there there will be regenerating liver nodules and the depressed part containing fibrotic bands okay now there will be a lot of regenerating liver nodules will be present and along with that they are surrounded by a band of fibrotic tissues they will be surrounded by the band of fibrotic tissue so by just looking the this picture of the liver you can easily say that it is a serotic picture of the liver so there will be regenerating liver nodules so how will you see what will you see in the morphology there will be there will be regenerating liver nodules with fibrotic bands Now, students, as cirrhosis is mostly associated with the chronic infection, and I told you uh, earlier that in the chronic picture, in the chronic infection, the most important cell that is involved, that is stem cell. So, in the morphology, you will see that in the chronic infection of the cirrhotic liver, there will be stem cell activation. Is the, and what are, what are the stem cells? These are not specialized cells, but they have a capacity and they have, have a capability to replicate the injured hepatocytes. Now, this stem cell, whenever this hepatocytes, when a portion of hepatocyte it get injured, so all the adjacent, uh, all the uh, stem cells they will come and they will replace these injured hepatocytes. Now, what happens? Say if this is a stem cell. Say so this is a stem cell. So there has a capacity to make any cells of the body. So now in this category, in this case, this stem cell will differentiate into the, yes, hepatocytes. Another stem cell will become and it will differentiate into hepatocytes. And is further in the same pattern. So whenever a lot of stem cell, they are differentiate into many hepatocytes. So it will, there will, it will look like as a, that there is pattern of these hepatocytes will be look like in the form of sheets and we call this as that there is ductular reaction occur. There, that is ductular reaction and ductular reaction will delay the serotic picture. Now the another thing is that there is regression of fibrosis. As you know that whenever, whenever in any area, if there is repeatedly healing, repeatedly healing and scarring and fibrosis occur, so this scarring and fibrosis, they are, they are there will be a one stage came that when they are get regressed. So when they, whenever, when they will be regressed, so whenever the causative agent you removed, so ultimately this fibrosis will be regressed. So in the clinical, if you see the morphology of the serotic liver picture, you will found that there will be regenerating liver nodules along with that there will be fibrotic bands okay and the second category and the as it is a chronic infection so it may lead to the activation of a stem cell and these stem cell it lead to the formation of the or it lead to the activation of the ductular reaction and the third phase whenever the conjunctive agent removed so it, there will be a regression of the fibrosis occur the student this is a morphology of the chronic liver failure now let's talk about the clinical feature now if you see the clinical feature of the chronic liver failure so it is very obvious that this chronic liver fa failure it is might be it is uh, coming from the acute liver infection so when all the clinical feature almost if the if whenever a serotic patient came it is 40 and 40 percent cases it is asymptomatic like you can't uh, the patient will be asymptomatic and the symptom is not usually manifested but the, there will be a lot of as we discussed earlier in the previous video of the acute liver failure that there are a lot of clinical feature that is uh, jaundice and hepatic encephalopathy a lot of like uh, 
coagulopathy so all dead and jaundice they all clinical feature they will be manifested here as well but there are certain additional clinical features which is very important and they are more associated with the chronic liver failure and cirrhosis that is pruritus that is portal hypertension hyperestrogenemia and hepatocellular carcinoma now what actually how this why this pruritus occur pruritus means that severe aging and in this case this pruritus it is occur due to the bilirubin retention there is increased level of bilirubin and this bilirubin it is not get is uh, metabolized so that's why the pitch that's pruritus occur due to the increased level of the bilirubin and sometimes sometimes this pruritus is so much severe that patient is unable to tolerate this aging and for that reason the patient go for liver transplantation okay now that's the one of the most important clinical feature of the patient is pruritus the second one is portal hypertension as we told i to, as I told you earlier say if this is a liver so all the GIT blood supply uh, as a result of all the veins emerge from intestine and through hepatic portal vein it comes into the liver now just imagine if there is pathology occur in the liver if there is a chronic infection they are continue in the liver so it means that all the blood supply all the blood supply that is coming from the uh, GIT they will come to this area but they will not go toward the liver so it means that the blood will move in a, in a backward direction so there will be increased pressure occur in the hepatic portal vein whenever there is a hepatic portal vein pressure increases so it is very much obvious that in the surrounding there are peritoneal cavities so all these blood and all these fluids it move toward the peritoneal cavity and ultimately the patient can be suffering from SITs there is fluid collection occur in the peritoneal cavity so it is also one of the most important and important complication of the cirrhosis in cirrhotic picture okay now the another thing is hyperestrogenemia so normally the estrogen level it is more in female as compared to male now here as we know that estrogen is metabolized in the liver now if uh, estrogen is metabolized in liver and liver is actually not able to work properly so it means the estrogen is not metabolized if estrogen is not metabolized it means the estrogen level get exceeded above from their normal value so whenever estrogen is moves upward so actually it got it caused certain manifestation in male and similarly it caused certain manifestation in female now if the estrogen level get increases in the male what happens the three important clinical features coming that there is three important symptoms there will be gynecomastria like there will be breast development in the male and there will be hypogonadism and another hand if the estrogen level get exceeded in female so at that condition there will be menstrual abnormality in the female along with that there are certain lactational problems as well and the most and serious complication that is hepatocellular carcinoma that is often associated with the chronic liver failure we have a major lecture on hepatocellular carcinoma inshallah we will be discussed in upcoming lecture so hopefully students you are getting the lecture thank you so much